good morning. I hope this morning finds you well and safe again this morning uh, and excited to get into God's word and we do so we turn to Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 34. Mark uh, tw- uh, 5 verses 21 to 34. These are stories of, of faith uh, but ultimately of Jesus' power so let's read them together. I'll pause for a moment now to allow you to read those for yourself. And in reading these verses, allow me to draw your attention to verses 35 and 36, where we will have read, While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. I want to begin this morning by considering the story of a a man called Charles Templeton. He was a close friend and preaching associate of Billy Graham in the 1940s, preaching the gospel to large crowds in major arenas all across the world. However, along the way, intellectual doubts began to nag at him and eventually he abandoned his faith and resigned from the ministry. Interviewed whenever he was 83 years old and suffering from Alzheimer's, Templeton uh, talked about the reasons why he'd left the faith. He said, I started considering the plagues that sweep across parts of the planet and indiscriminately kill, more often than not, painfully. All kinds of people, the ordinary, the decent and the, and the rotten. It, was just, it just became crystal clear to me that it is not possible for an intelligent person to believe that there really is a deity who loves. When asked what he thought about Jesus Christ, Templeton uh, did not acknowledge him as God. Instead, he responded with these words. He was the greatest human being who had ever lived. He was a moral genius. His ethical sense was unique. He was intrinsically the wisest person that I've ever encountered in my life or in my readings. He's the most important thing in my life. I know it may sound strange, but I have have to say I adore him. Everything good I know, everything decent I know, everything pure I know, I learn from Jesus. He is the most important human being who has ever existed. And if I may put it this way, I miss him. Templeton's eyes filled with tears. He wept freely and he couldn't speak any further. In this man we see someone who had belief. He had faith in Jesus Christ. But then the circumstances of life began to choke his faith. A bit like the seed in the story of the parable that Jesus told in chapter 4. For Templeton, faith gave way to his interpretation of personal circumstances and global situations. While he still admired Jesus Jesus as a great human being, he did not trust that he was Lord over all. Faith was no longer his basis for facing circumstances and he no longer saw Jesus as he really was. In today's passage, however, we see two people who made the opposite spiritual journey. In both Jairus and the hemorrhaging woman, we see that faith grows and matures. In these stories, we see two people who begin with a childlike faith. They come in childlike dependence to Jesus and they see him as he truly is, the Son of God and the Lord of all. Perhaps today we need to both gaze at these examples of faith, but more importantly, we need to gaze at the one who they had faith in, the compassionate, all-powerful God-man come to bring man to God. Our passage today continues Mark's presentation of the greatness of Jesus, the Son of God, which began in verse 41 of chapter 4. Mark has shown us that Jesus is Lord over the created order and the powers of nature. He is Lord over the spiritual realms and the demons. And you've heard me say this a few times, but do not miss the significance of this. Jesus is not just a nice man who does special things. He's not simply a teller of great tales and an all-wise teacher. He is Lord of everything. Everything is made by him and continues to exist because of him. He is in control of global events and he's in control of personal circumstances. He is the Lord of all and he cares. Jesus cares about his entire creation, but he also cares about each individual person in that creation. And we see this in our passage. We see Jesus on his way to the home of Jairus, a Galilean uh, synagogue ruler. Along the way, he encounters a woman hemorrhaging. 
Mark explains that uh, this woman believed that she just had to make contact with Jesus' cloak and she would be healed. So it's likely that her pursuit of Jesus was an imperfect faith that was mixed with superstition. However, we see Jesus, Jesus accept her imperfect but true faith and call her to find peace in life-giving truth that only he can bring and offer. Likewise with us, Jesus does not wait for us to, to be free of theological errors, does not wait for our faith to be perfect. He gives us faith and he saves us. It's a work of his sovereign grace. However, he also calls us, uh, like he did the woman, to let go of our false beliefs and to grow up in our faith to pursue true understanding of him and his ways. Following Jesus is a journey of deepening trust based upon who he reveals himself to be in his word. During the encounter with this daughter, we learn the, of what has happened to Jairus' daughter. Jairus' daughter has died as Jesus was on his way. Now Jairus is faced with the biggest decision of his life. He has trusted G Jesus with his sick daughter, but could he now trust Jesus with his dead daughter? We remember that Jesus, uh, that Jairus came to Jesus first of all in faith. He placed his trust in Jesus that he could do, that he could heal his daughter. So at this new moment, there is a decision to be made. At this new moment of decision, Jesus calls on Jairus to do something. In verse 36, Jesus literally says, do not fear, but keep on believing. Jesus' call to Jairus at this point was a call to persevere, to keep on believing in God and his goodness, even though things looked impossible from human eyes. And the story ends with the little girl standing up and walking around and feeling hungry. Why? Because Jesus is the Lord of all, even the Lord of death. The Jesus, who, the Jesus who tells this little girl to get up and walk will one day get up and walk out of the tomb as he declares victory over sin and death. They've been decisively defeated because he is Lord of all. Jairus' situation seemed hopeless, but Jesus calls him to true faith. True faith rests not upon Truth rests upon and trusts in and keeps leaning upon God and how he's revealed himself in Jesus, not upon the circumstances that we face. True faith is not just about making a credal statement, but a disposition of mind and heart which takes God at his word, regardless of the circumstances we face. Faith is not determined by circumstances, but is the basis upon which we face our circumstances. So, do you really believe today that Jesus is the Lord over everything that's happening in our world and in your personal world? Do you believe that this particular moment in history is under God's control? Do you really believe that he is in charge of this whole situation and he's about to bring about his perfect purposes? All of us, if we're honest, have questioned what Jesus is doing at this time. We've questioned what God is doing at this time. It is human to question and to wonder. That's why we need faith. So let us be people who pursue faith that is founded upon God and his faithfulness and his goodness, upon his sending of his son to heal and to forgive, and upon his sovereign grace and gracious sovereignty. He is good and he is God and he is good all the time. So let us put our trust in our good God today and every day. God bless.